the Peter Drew Amazing People podcast. Welcome to the Peter Drew Amazing People podcast, where he uses his vast network of entrepreneur buddies around the globe to bring you the latest news, information, and how to make money online. And now, your host, Peter Drew. Today, we have a friend of mine who we just figured out we've known since 2008, Dana Wilhoy. Dana's killing it on Amazon these days, writing books herself, and this is what I thought would be an awesome interview so we can share what she's learned over the years and what she's doing and how she did it. Dana, welcome. It's great welcome. to have you here. It's great to be here. So let's catch up a bit. Uh, we, we, we met in 2008 and we did a product together on social media and Twitter, if I remember. That is right. Back when Twitter had first started and it was really big and I remember you got on Twitter and you got a whole bunch of followers right away and everybody was really excited about all the social media back then. Absolutely. I've still got over 100,000 um, people, people <laughs> between my um, two accounts. I've got two Twitter accounts, Peter Drew and Pete and Oz. And I've been trying for years to figure out how to turn them into one account, but there was a way to do it back in the day, but I don't think it's available to do now. So, look, so you've got a really interesting story. Um, you've, you were a reporter. You studied um, journalism at NYU. You come from New York. And so then you moved into the IM space, and then you moved out of the IM space into the author, authoring space. Is that how you describe it? Sure, that works. Authoring space. I like it. I'm in space. Awesome. So if you can give us a little story about your journey how you, uh, from reporting into IM and wait to where you are now. Well, journalism, unfortunately, um, is kind of going downhill from what it once was, especially newspaper journalism. It's just really a dying industry. So I got out of that, and I decided to try Internet marketing. And I enjoyed it, and I did really well my first couple of years. But um, it's just Google is constantly changing things, and I found it frustrating to constantly, like every time I'd have a system down, Google would reinvent the wheel, and I finally decided to try something else. So I have always liked writing, and I am fortunate that because I was a daily newspaper reporter, I got used to writing quickly, and I just don't even get to sit there and think about the luxury of having writer's block. I am used to writing on a deadline and having to produce publishable copy, you know, quickly. Wow, so, interesting. Yeah, yeah. That's a really great skill to have if you're looking it, into it, writing, that's for sure. It helped a lot. And so what happened is um, I started seeing all these people were having a lot of success on Kindle and the Nook. I mean, just making amazing money, you know, people making tens of thousands of dollars every month, you know, some people making like a million dollars a year. And I was like, you know, I'm hey, hang on a second, hang on a second. If, okay. if you can just describe to me what the Nook is, because I've never heard of that. Maybe other people. Oh, um, Barnes and Noble. It's they have uh, it's the same thing as the Kindle pretty much, but for Barnes and Noble. So it's just another place to sell your writing. Oh, OK, cool. Excellent. I didn't, did not know that. So um, I make the majority of my money on Amazon, but I do make a few thousand dollars a month on the Nook, so it's certainly worthwhile. Wow, cool. So that's a small market, and you're still making a couple thousand a month from the right. Nook. Right, that is a much smaller market. but Wow. So what happened was um, I... And unfortunately, I can't, for privacy reasons, I can't give my pen name. And I have tried, I went through several pen names. And I tried, I, I sat there and I studied the bestseller list. And I analyzed what I thought would sell well. I, I looked at what kinds of stories are selling well, what genres. And I decided that romance was my best bet. Um, and I basically, I, I studied, I bought the best selling I bought books by the best selling authors and I read yep. them and I analyzed them and I sat there and I like made out little um like outlines of yep. how they wrote their books, how they did what they did, uh like you know, like how how they opened the book, how the characters met, that kind of thing, what sort of stood in the way of the characters getting together. Uh what So you're already looking sorry, so you're already looking at the structure of these novels from a professional writer's perspective, I suppose. 
Right. I mean, I was looking at it in a commercial way. I am not sitting there trying to create the next great American novel, uh, mm -hmm. and I'm not really trying to write literary fiction that changes your life. I'm trying to write something that's fun and entertaining that, awesome. you know, takes people away from their ordinary world for a little while. Mm-hmm. And I also, I really, frankly, I wanted to make money. So mm -hmm. that was why I sat there and I analyzed what was on the bestseller list. And I read a lot of bestsellers. Uh, and I tried a few different pen names, a few different subgenres, shall we say, of, of romantic fiction. And I finally, it took me about a year and a half to really have big success, but... My first month, I sorry. My first month, I made a few hundred dollars. My second month, I made a couple thousand. My third month, I was so, making a few thousand. So before we, before we get into that, how long did it take you to write your first book? I'm a very fast writer. It took me a few weeks. Um, wow. And I generally, I have like a whole little system which I can describe to you. But I generally, uh, I average a book every six weeks, sometimes four weeks if I can really push myself. Wow. So, just roughly, how many words? Because I'm um, like forty uh, to sixty thousand. Sorry, go on. Wow, yeah. Because I, I saw, I bought one book um, that a friend of mine put on Amazon. For, he's an internet marketer, and um, it was about video marketing. And so, I bought the Kindle edition. I got the PDF on my computer, copy and pasted the text into my t text editor, and it was it was thirteen thousand words. I couldn't believe it. I, I've the document I'm writing, the instructions document I'm writing to go with the software I've developed and I'm selling uh, next week, that's um, 11,500 words and that's just my instruction document. So I'm always interested to know what sort, how many uh, words are in books. So you're pumping out 40 to 60,000 words every four to six weeks. That is correct. So here, let me, wow. I will spell out my little system for you, which is... Awesome. Okay, so um, first of all, but what has been the key to me is planning out my book before I write it. So I have an entire outline written, and that I spend anywhere from three to you know three three days to a week just on my outline. And I have because I'm writing genre fiction, um, romances are like mysteries or thrillers. There's just a certain set list of things that have to happen, wow. and um, for instance, okay, so in a romance, you have the hero, you have the heroine, um, you have, they meet, they're always like um, initially attracted to each other, but there's always got to be some reason that they think that they can't get together. So I have mm -hmm. to come up with, you know, how did they first meet? Why did they think they can't get together? Um, how do they overcome that in the beginning? What is it that's still keeping them apart? Um, there's a moment pretty much in every kind of story called the all is lost moment, which is about two thirds of the way or like almost towards the end of the book. And then the hero and or the heroine have to sort of marshal their resources, get over it, um, come up with a way to actually achieve what it is they want to achieve. And then you've got, um, the ending and my books also have like an element of mystery to them. So I sort of have to work out the mystery. There was like some kind of villain that the hero and or the heroine are trying to defeat. I have to come up with the villain's motivation. So what I do is I write all that out and then I sit down and I write a chapter by chapter outline and each chapter has a few sentences for each scene that's going to happen. Mm -hmm. And so by the time I've got this outline done, I pretty much so is know. that like the skeleton? Is that like the skeleton of the whole book? The whole all the chapters are laid out with just right. a couple of sentences in each, and the structures there, and then you go into filling it out at a later date once you've got that complete uh, skeleton in place, I suppose. That is it exactly. So I've got the skeleton, uh -huh. and then all I have to do is flesh it out. And then what I do next is I sit there and I set my timer. And I write in 30-minute stints, and then about, you know, I, I'm going, I already know what's going to happen, so I'm just sort of filling it out with more detail. I'm putting in, like, their dialogue, I'm describing where they are, um, I'm describing the action. And then in 30 minutes, I can write anywhere from six to 1,200 words. So, right, right. So I then take like a few minutes break and then so basically in about an hour I've probably got about 1200 to 2000 words and I do that for four hours a day. So I, I, what I do is I do like for about two hours straight 
And I always do it in the morning because that way, if the whole rest of the day gets away from me, I've at least already got, you know, anywhere from two to 4,000 words written. And, you know, I've gotten my work done for the day. And then I try to do another two hours stint later in the afternoon or the evening. Wow, so, that's nice. So anything thought, you do above and beyond that is like a bonus. Right. And you'd feel good about getting those bonuses done every day. That's awesome, yeah. So then I've got, like, anywhere from four to, I'd say 4,000 is probably my typical. I always aim for, like, seven or 8,000, and that doesn't usually happen. But mm -hmm. even, like, 4,000 words, 10 days, that's my first draft. So then I set it aside for a few days, and then I go back in, and I edit it, I flesh things out some more, I, you know, see where there's any holes, and then for my first few books, I did not even use an editor. I just published them after that. I don't recommend anyone do that. I just didn't have the money at that time for an yeah. editor. So um, it, it worked for me. <laughs> so, so you have an ed editor now? I do. I have a copy editor that I work with um, that I found on one of the writing forums that I like a lot. And that wow. helps a lot because, honestly, there is a lot of errors slip past you. And I'm a journalist. I mean, I keep thinking I found everything, but it's just you get, you're too close to your own writing. Oh, look, I could imagine having an editor there. Would, all that says to me, I can just feel this big sense of relief. You get the majority. You do your part, and then you hand it over and let someone else worry about that stuff that they're good at. That just to me just sounds like a massive relief. Um, I have editors just with my instruction documents. So I get it all out, and then I get other people to read it through kind of newbie eyes, and and they see all the stuff that I've missed, and it's just a massive relief to have that. Isn't it incredible wow. how much stuff you like? Absolutely, you look at it, you could swear that it's like clean and perfect, and then you give it to someone else, and they start pointing out all this stuff, and you're like, oh my god, how did I miss that? Oh, absolutely. I just did it yesterday. I left out a whole section. Oh. And his notes were, make this section make sense. And then um, I looked at it, and um, I left out a whole section. That's why it didn't make any sense. So, so, yeah. But it's just awesome being able to have an editor just back you up and and rely on their expertise. That's awesome. Wow. And so, where, where are we up to? So, that is a, an, an awesome structure you've got laid out there. But I, I, I can write. I, I love writing. My whole goal with internet marketing was to make enough money so I could retire with a laptop on a beach and and just write because I, I, I love writing I've got so many ideas I've got etc etc but I've always had an issue with finding that structure to um, build a story around and what you've described is awesome yeah I can tell you the planning out your story I used to for many years when I was a newspaper reporter I was trying to write novels and I would write without planning anything, and I'd get literally like 20, 30,000 words in, and I would just have written myself into a corner, and I would have no idea where to go, and I would just chuck it. So I have thrown away like many novels worth of writing just because I didn't plan things out. Wow. So, so how long have you been doing this now? I can't remember. It's about two years, a little over two years now that I've been doing it. And um, like I said, the first... Um, I was making okay money the first few months. Um, it took me really about a year and a half of a lot of experimenting, um, during which I earned my my months would range anywhere from three thousand to twelve thousand dollars, which is great, but it was just so up and down. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. without getting into specifics, I mm -hmm. will say that I earned six figures last year, and it's just I finally kind of found a genre that worked really well for me. And it's it's uh, been been uh, pretty steady ever since. And what a great way to to earn a living! Totally, one hundred percent independent. Do whatever you like. It's that's awesome. Uh, well, so so that's right. So over the last couple of years, and you're pumping out a book every um, four to six weeks. So the, the question. The questions are: How many books have you read? And do, do you find? I don't know if you've got these stats, but are you finding that um, people are following you as an author and like building a subscriber list, like on yeah, Amazon? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, you know, the one thing I remember from when I was in internet marketing is the money's in the list. Everyone always talks about, you know, build your mm -hmm. list. So I set up um, an email uh, subscribe. 
Um, I use Mad Mimi, which is a really simple, it's M-A-D-M-I-M-I dot com. It's mm -hmm. just a really simple newsletter marketing uh, company. And I had them set up when I really only had like a couple of dozen people subscribing. And mm -hmm. then when my book took off, then all of a sudden I had hundreds of subscribers and now I've got thousands of subscribers. So I had that whole system in place just wow. sort of waiting for my success. And when I kind of like exploded overnight, pretty much, mm -hmm. then I'm happy that I had that email set up because I would have messed, I would have missed it. Uh, sorry, I'll start again. I would have missed out on a lot of subscribers if I hadn't been ready. Wow. So when you blew up, you had that uh, email list in place. And so people subscribed to your email or newsletter. And then when you release new books, they get, they get um, an update. Um, pseudonym name has just released another book blah blah you loved XYZ here's another one and it's just that would just create sales pretty much instantly wouldn't it so what happens now is when I, I about a week before the book comes out I usually send out the first chapter to my subscribers as sort of like a teaser to encourage wow. everyone to buy it and then on the day that it comes out um, I sent the newsletter to everybody saying, okay, the book's out now. I mean, a little, you know, better phrased than that. But, and then I put mm -hmm. a link to the book, and I get anywhere from six to eight hundred sales that first day. And what that does is that gets it on the best, all the bestseller lists on Amazon and on the Nook. And then what that does is it gives it a lot of visibility, and it's sort of the sales take off from there because people who don't know anything about me see that I'm on the top whatever list. And generally, they check it out. <coughs> Excuse me. I wish you could see my face now. I've got this massive smile on my face. That is just the perfect scenario, isn't it? You write your book. You go through the process. The editor's done. You put it up online. Then you, then you promote it yourself through methods you've created yourself. And within a couple of days, you're going to be making the top seller list. And that is phenomenal. And the other little tip that I'll pass along, I always let my readers know that I am premiering the book at 99 cents. I raise it to 2.99 in a couple of weeks, but what I always tell everyone is that because you're my subscriber, you know when the book first comes out and the book is on sale now, so you're getting like the the heads up. So they kind of feel like they're getting like, you know, they're getting yeah. in on a little secret and you make a lot less obviously at 99 cents, but it helps it sort of instantly people it makes it an impulse buy so it gets that visibility early on and then and it gives you the volume of sales which give you those um uh top top list um right exactly i get on all the bestseller lists and then it sort of becomes self-perpetuating that's awesome I, I noticed um in a book i read a sci-fi novel um about a month ago uh it was a great book i really loved it um and then I was disappointed that the, the the story ended and there was another five pages at the end and that's the author pitching himself for me to go online, subscribe to his email and there was a massive pitch um, towards the end, which I did because I love his writing. And then um, it, it, it was interesting, I haven't seen that before where um, they're really getting people out of the books and getting them online so they can communicate them via social media, etc, etc. And really build that engagement online. It was new. I haven't seen it before, so um, I took note. It was interesting. I do also have a Facebook page. Um, I have not. It's funny because I used to be known as like the Twitter queen. I yep. have not found it as easy to interact with people on Twitter for for fiction. So on Facebook. right. So Facebook works really well for me. So, oh, I see. Right. So I have my Facebook fan page. I've got about seven hundred fans. Um, again, that's all under my pen name, but, you know, I sit there and I just sort of chit chat with people, you know, update a couple times a day. Um, I'm honestly hard labor on Twitter and then the newsletter I send out kind of like every few weeks. I don't like to beat it to death because if I don't have anything mm -hmm. to announce, there's not really anything, you know, any point in saying, saying, you know, like, okay, three more weeks till the book comes out. So yeah, what, yeah, I, yeah. what I try to do is just, you know, like I said, I send that first chapter to give everyone sort of like a taste of the book and hopefully get them excited about it. And then I send the announcement that the book is out. Brilliant. And what do you do about artwork? 
Oh, I I tried to design my own covers and it was very ugly. So <laughs> I pay anywhere from like a hundred to two hundred dollars. I go to stock photo sites. Um, I buy the picture of like the hero or heroine that I want, and I have a few different cover artists. <laughs> Excuse me. All right. Okay. So you you've got the same cover artists throughout. Yeah, I do try to create a brand. I don't know, honestly, how much that matters, but I try to sort of have a consistent look for my covers and um, for a sort of, like, quick brand recognition. Ooh. And Excellent. I, if I get a new cover artist, I show them the old covers and say, I kind of want these, this color tone and this look and feel to it. And mm -hmm. the lettering I want pretty similar on all the books, and I want it in approximately the same place. And, uh, yeah, I always pay for a cover artist because they're good at what they do, and I'm good at writing. I'm not good at designing, unfortunately. How, how much artwork's involved? Is, is that just um, a front and rear cover, or that's pretty much about it? Yeah, I just speak for books that are on the Kindle and the Nook and the other <laughs> online books that are on the uh, Kindle and the Nook and the other online sites. Uh, I, you just need like the front cover. Now you can also use Create Space, which is part of Amazon. I haven't done that yet. I haven't put any mm -hmm. of my books in print. But yep. if you do that, then you have to pay your cover artist. Usually, you pay them a little extra, and they design it to look. Basically, you have, they design like a print cover, which means you need the spine of the book and the back of the book as well. Oh, uh, gotcha. Uh, speaking of that, the difference between hardcover and um, um. An ebook, I suppose. So, what, what sort of um, what what would be the percentage between um, online orders and physical orders? You know, I haven't tried it myself. I've never tried to put my books in print. I probably should, but it's just one of those things that it, there's like a learning curve. It takes a while. You have to format it differently for print, and I just haven't wanted to take the like day or two that I think it would take to teach myself to do how to do that. So Although you're actually, I'll oh, go on. Sorry. So yours are 100% online then, or e-books? Yeah, I have not sold any print copies. I've never made anything of mine into print. Um, there are people who will format it and probably upload it for you, so that's probably something that I should look into mm. just as wow. an additional area. Man, that's fascinating. I, I, I assumed they were hardcovers, but you've had all the success purely with um, uh, I don't know the correct term. Is it e-book or um, Yeah, e -book. Yeah, yes. just entirely online. And then wow. I also have not uh, tried audiobooks. And I know some people make, you know, again, an additional anywhere from a few hundred to a couple thousand dollars a month extra. Mm. But that's a whole other learning curve. You have to um, – Amazon has a company that they work with called, called Audible.com. Yeah. yeah, I've been following Audible a lot lately. Audible specifically are going hardcore in their marketing, particularly with podcasts. Um, they're saturating the podcast market with advertising for Audible. Um, and I checked their Alexa ranking. They, Audible's going through the roof, particularly the last 12 or 18 months. And people are having a lot of success. And um, people are having a lot of success promoting it. I think they get um, $25 per free registration. So it's um, really lucrative for people to promote it. And thus, Audible's going through the roof. And people get the same experience as a podcast where they could listen to your book while they're driving to and from work or at the gym or while they're doing the vacuuming, etc. I think Audible's really um, um, the place to be at this point in time. Yeah, I went to a writer's convention recently and they talked about a lot of things which I had never thought about, but which are good things to consider. You know, for instance, you're hiring an actor for the book. Do you want a male actor to read, you know, it's basically like a voice actor. Do you want a mm -hmm. man reading your book? Do you want a woman reading your book? I still haven't decided because they're going to have to do all the voices. Yeah, and then absolutely. you have to make sure that you give them a really clean copy because if they come to an error in the narrative, then, you know, then how do they read that? Do they have to like smooth over? Do they have to sort of make it up as they go along? Yeah, and, that's right. Yeah. And um, basically, apparently, I hadn't realized how long it would take, but, I mean, I think that, like, a 40 or 50 or 60,000 word book, you know, that's, from what I gather, that's at least six or eight hours of reading, which had never occurred that's, to me. Really. Absolutely. Yeah, absolutely. It is, yeah. So, um, so, yeah, it's interesting, but that's definitely one of the areas I want to expand into. 
you, you could probably partner up with someone who wants to get into that space who is a uh, voice talent and just do an experiment I suppose you, you've already got the content um, and just do a deal on the first book one of your most one since you've got this history of, of books and I've we haven't gotten back to how many you've written but you could pick one of the most successful ones that's already a proven seller and dump that on audible that would be interesting to see so as far yeah. as how many I've written I probably wrote about 20 before I found my sort of successful niche and at that point um, since then I've written six that I would say are like the big bestsellers under my new pen name so I believe it's about 26 total um, oh so you so you've got more than one pen name on Amazon I do but my older ones I actually started pulling that pulling those older books because they weren't selling that well anymore and right. the newer one is just you know I finally basically I had been writing shorter stuff before and I decided to write full-length books um, and I sort of just I don't know I was concentrating more on quality and I was putting everything that I had learned into this new pen name and this new area of romance that I was exploring and oh, okay. it, it uh, just that new pen name was what took off. So this is a pen, pen name 2.0, the new right, updated yes. version. Awesome. That's awesome. Well, so that must have been scary, changing one brand that you've been building for a period of time and then thinking I'm going to go to 2.0. That must have been scary to see if it was going to work or not. It is, but here was my thinking. If it didn't work, I could always go back to the old pen name. That is the absolute beauty of the Internet and especially wow. of writing, you know, writing fiction on Amazon and Kindle. You can completely reinvent yourself. Mm. Well, uh, another, what, what, what made you and I reconnect after um, a couple of years was uh, a friend of mine, uh, Brian Schofield, here in Australia. He, um, he's a... He's a very smart guy and he's an avid writer and he's got a very, very interesting personal history. He was an um, Australian boxing champion. He boxed all around the world. He knows a lot of famous boxing people. And then um, he got into drugs and alcohol and went to rehab and that's where I met him back in 1988. And we've been buddies ever since. And we connected on Facebook a couple of years ago and he started showing me the stuff he's writing. It's, it's amazing stories. He's really got a gift for writing. And... Um, and then I told him about you, and I thought it would be perfect for you to to connect to um, give him a bit of advice. And so you two connected on Facebook, and it's kind of where we've gotten to now, where we've both reconnected via Brian again. And um, it's funny, he just uh, about a week ago, uh, he was on Facebook, and he sends he sends me a message. So so Peter, um, how did you meet Dana? How in the world, you in Australia, did you meet someone, this famous writer over in America? How did you make that contact, you know? And it was really funny, you know, it was like, how did little old Peter Drew get to meet this famous author in America, you know? It was it was awesome. Which is hilarious, was, because when I met you, I was like just starting out internet marketing, and I barely knew anything, and I was like, oh my gosh, I'm talking to the great Peter Drew, so <laughs> that's really, really funny that he actually, that he... <laughs> that he has that perception. I know, yeah. I suppose he just doesn't know me. I, I, I suppose I've got an online presence, and um, to people who don't know me in in that space, they like he knows me from, you know, the Pete who we met in rehab, you know, twenty five, whatever it was years ago. So it's funny, but he's a really cool guy. I'd love to see his his stories up on Amazon. It's fascinating. And another thing I wanted to run by you, um, another story about. Just earlier today, I told you I've got a story about a book. Um, my my daughter Isabella, when she was started at three, she came up with this pink house story, and she would just start telling us pink house stories about the pink house and imaginary friends she's got and the adventures they go on, and and we love them. She got so much attention from us when she told told the pink house story, so she do more and more. I recorded about five of them I think and you know with a three year old you put them on the toilet they need help and I go okay you're done now and I'd go and she go daddy another pink house story I go okay so I go back and while she's on the toilet she's told me these awesome pink house stories and um, 
my sisters, my wife's my wife's sister comes out from England to stay with us every summer for four to six weeks. And as it turns out, she started writing down these pink house stories and um it was a bit a bit weird without asking us. Um she wrote a book with all of Isabella's pink house stories in it. Which was really strange. But anyway, we went along with it and um she is kind of the uh, antithesis or opposite of what you've done. She wrote a book. She didn't get the ISBN number. She got great artwork, and the first book she sent us was pretty average. So my wife said, well, gave us some tips about writing to young kids because obviously my wife has read a lot of kids' books, man. You know, we've got two young kids. Lynn's read, read all of them. And so she gave the tips, and so she rewrote it, and now the book's pretty cool. But she's invested a lot of money. She's self-published. She's got a whole room of hardcover books and without an ISBN number, so she can't re even really sell them anywhere. She's got a little page up on the internet with um, my buy button, but I can't even buy it from Australia. So it's kind of, if there's a way to do it, she's definitely not doing it. Um, so. Well, I'll tell you, I don't think that most people sell well with their first book. I think that's a rarity. I mean, it looks like I'm an overnight success because I invented a new pen name, but I had been experimenting with all those books and actually with several different pen names before I finally, you know, created this new pen name. And then all of a sudden I'm like this miraculous success. And the other thing I would say is that I experimented in different areas of romance. I mean, and I, I also deliberately looked for what sells well. I wasn't sitting there sort of randomly going, okay, I'm going to write a book and I'm just going to sit there and think what I want to write the most. I approached it from the angle of what could I write that will sell well, but that I would also enjoy writing, if you get what I'm saying. I put yep, the yep, absolutely. commercial part of it first, but I did find I tried some trendy types of um, genres that I really didn't enjoy and they didn't sell that well. So I'd say it's important to strike that balance. Excellent. Uh, but see, I, I, sorry, I, I didn't even realize there were different uh, versions of romance novels. So, did you find that out through your research when you were investigating the popular uh, romance books that were selling? Well, of course, you're a guy, so it doesn't surprise me that you're <laughs> an expert in all the little minutia of the. I mean, okay, when you think about it, if you look at the romance <laughs> list, there's yeah. paranormal romance, there's like right. historical romance. Right. There's romantic thrillers. There's what they call sweet romance, which has, like, no sex in it. There's erotic romance, like Fifty Shades of Grey. Right. Uh, there's um, just all different kinds of romance. And people look for a very specific thing in each line of, of you know, in, in each genre. Um, yeah, yeah. One of the new... Um, types of romance relevant I'd say within the past couple of years is called new adult and what that is there's young adult books which are sort of for the high school and younger crowd new adult is for the college crowd and that is huge so I learned these things by studying the trends a lot and one of the that's a wrap thanks for listening to the Peter Drew Amazing People Podcast make sure to subscribe on iTunes search Peter Drew Podcast Thank <laughs> you.